AM 560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM 560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. So, uh, the second gentleman... Dog. dog, dog. He likes to spin it. You know what I mean. Dog Emhoff. He, he was on spinner. with uh, Dan Libatard, who is one of these uh, sports guys who is uh, desirous of being a card-carrying leftist member of the serious press corps, so-called serious press corps. So one of these sports guys who, as always, is in service of the left, which is the sports press corps, being an extension of the D.C. political press corps. That's what it is. Oh. Uh, dog was on, uh, didn't, uh, the issues about the nanny did not come up. The issues Aww. about the alleged striking of the ex-girlfriend did not come up. The beatdown didn't come up. I'm shocked. Did not come up. The, uh, plagiarism of, uh, his wife, Kamala, did not come up. Uh, but what did come up was, uh, a call, the call, the day that it was announced that Biden would be stepping aside and it was going to be, uh. Kamala's turn to step up. This is uh, how is that it? day went when <laughs> Mamala was trying to get a hold of the dog. You said that communication is key, but she couldn't communicate with you immediately to tell you that Joe Biden had stepped down, correct? You were busy in, in spin spin class, yeah. right? I okay. That was right. So it, it, it it was i was in la uh it was uh during that weekend when all the pl the planes were were down because of the sure, software right. glitch so I, I had to spend an extra day in la mm -hmm. i decided to go to a cycling class with some friends and it was an hour hour class and we were just chit chatting i had my phone in the secret service car so i didn't ha have my phone and then my uh, friend's partner just showed me his phone with the letter from president biden and i'm like gotta go and just ran into the car and there was my phone literally like you could feel the the steam seven or eight messages all with you know where are you call kamala call kamala and it was a one minute or less conversation which started with where the f were you i need you right now and basically get to work and I did. You run out sweaty. Are you wearing the tight biking oh, shorts? Bro. Do you have those uh, clackety clack spikes on the whole thing? Or I, I, I try not to do the tight biking shorts. So I just do like the long, long old school, oh, you know, so. Nike basketball shorts, which probably aren't great for spin class. And but I was drenched in sweat. I took the clackety clack shoes off, but and the car wasn't exactly on the curb, so it was still a couple of hundred yards of old guy half running trying to get to that car to to jump on the phone and, and get in the mix mm. and, he, and unfortunately that didn't leave him any time for the bikini wax he had scheduled uh the uh best response i've seen to this what? from a exer named ashley st Clair. if i was a man you could not waterboard this story out of me I mean, but, he's so insufferable. He's even like, clack. he knows they're called spin shoes. I mean, everything about them is phony and fake. And don't forget, her dropping F-bombs, you guys, 92% of her vice presidential staff left. When she was attorney general, she would demand when she walked in the room that they call her general. You could not look her in the eye. I mean, she is not who you think she is. She is a fraud, and she is saying anything to get elected. If I was a man, you could not waterboard the story of me. Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, that a dog isn't much of a man. And the whole, either. like, I couldn't be with her because uh, the plane, there was a plane glitch. He didn't want to be in D.C. He doesn't want to be with her. He wants to hang out with his friends and go to spin classes in mm, L.A. Something like that. Mm. Darvio Moro is the CEO of the FCB Radio Network. He's also the co-host of the Outlaws Radio. He joins us now. Darvio, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. I wonder why they're having such a hard time attracting men. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no, that, you, that, you, you couldn't relate to that story? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> hmm, interesting. I thought the D Doug Emhoff, sort of an everyman, that, uh, that would have great appeal, but you're saying not so much. No, no. I mean, yeah, they're painting him as this 
you know, big tough lumberjack, but, but that well, story right there, I don't know, man. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't want to uh, take Barack Obama's place here, but I mean, Doug Emhoff is uh, a, a paragon of the new masculinity that uh, eschews toxic masculinity. And, you know, maybe some um, macho man like you, Darvio, uh, maybe there's a little misogyny going on here, and that's why you're not completely on board. <laughs> I mean, this is embarrassing. I mean, and they wonder why they have a man problem. And it's a man problem across the board. They have a problem with white men. They have a problem with Hispanic men. They have a problem with black men. And they, they don't understand why. It's not just about you know, Trump's image and stuff like that. It's about the fact that many men, including many black men, feel as if they are not speaking to us they don't represent us they are not interested in what we think they're not interested in how we feel they're not interested in the things that we care about and ultimately one of the things i think is really tripping them up is if you understand black men culturally particularly working class black men culturally we're not that much different than men of other races so if you're doing things that are being repelling to men in general, eventually you're going to lose the men of color as well. Well, well she was on with Charlemagne uh, yesterday on his radio program, and he was seemed very understanding of everything that was going on, very supportive. And um, he was uh, moved by her explanation that the why she sort of repeats things incessantly and often incoherently is because that's message discipline and she's trying to drive a message to make sure that uh, black people, black men, uh, understand that she is uh, looking out for them in a way that Trump isn't. He's a dictator and she's got a new plan that's going to give $20,000 forgivable loans to black entrepreneurs. So there you go. So I saw that clip as well. The interesting thing about that is, like, I'm not, I don't begrudge, you know, mess, message discipline. I think one of the, one of the uh, complaints about Trump is that he doesn't stay on message, message enough, right? So I don't, I'm not necessarily opposed to that. The problem is what she does sometimes and the way it comes off, I'll put it like that because I'm not in her head. The way it comes off is not, it doesn't come off as message discipline. Sometimes it comes across as you're talking to people like they're children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a lot of times when she's making these statements, when she's doing her speeches, it, it comes across like she's talking to people that she thinks are stupid. Mm -hmm. That's where I would put the line at. <laughs> well, and, what, and, but, she, you know, she wants to forgivable loans for 20K for entrepreneurs. That, that's not a loan. And if she wanted to help the black community, why did she wait until October 14th of an election year to release this plan? See, you just asked the, the perfect question and the question that I think if Republicans are looking for ways to still attract black voters and attack that, that is what that is the question that should be asked. It is a transparent and I wrote about this in Newsweek. It is a transparent attempt to paper over the issues that she has with the community. Now, I've always been an advocate for saying, look, I'm not opposed to targeted policies that address where the need is, but this is not that. This is a clear and transparent attempt to address an issue that they didn't think they had, because typically what happens is in a lot of other presidential elections in the past, sometimes Republicans have had uh, inflated numbers of support among black voters in polling. And then eventually it comes down. The difference is now it's not coming down. It's never, you've never seen a Republican, at least I'm 37 years old, not in my lifetime. You'd have to go back to like the 60s to see a Republican with numbers in polling among black voters this high, this late, in a campaign they they're just now realizing oh this might be real well if the plan is not enough um what if anything can the harris campaign do maybe um i don't know some sort of cycling excursion with doug or something <laughs> 
right. Everybody get together and hold hands and talk it out. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I don't. I don't know. I, I and I've been saying this, and you you know I've been talking about this on social media, on this show, on my show, and Newsweek for over a year. I've been saying for over a year that this was coming, and they decided to take it seriously on October fourteenth. I don't know if. I don't know if that's going to work. Now, of course, um, not all, but a lot of black media outlets are, are pretty liberal. So they're going to make sure that the community knows this plan. But the problem that I have, and of course, hypocrisy is nothing new in politics, but when Trump released the platinum plan in 2020, um, they criticized it for being something that was released in the last month right before the election. And I criticized that as well. But now they turn around and do the exact same thing <laughs> years later, and they want to pretend like this is an earnest effort. Don't you? You can't do that close to the end of an election and say, "Okay, everything's all good now." I don't know if that's going to work. Well, and the and, and and in addition to the plan that was released, then she reintroduces in that uh, interview with Charlemagne the uh, notion of reparations, and she's always been a proponent of studying reparations. That's something. We have to study because people didn't get their 40 acres and a mule that they were promised and so forth. I mean, is that really the rabbit hole she wants to go down? Is that really going to uh, uh, engage black voters who are not with her right now to reexamine her? I don't think so. So here's the thing. You know, in our community, uh, reparations is a is a touchy subject. Um, There are some black folks who support it and some who don't. But basically what she did by doing that was trying to have it both ways. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to call for a study. Mm -hmm. We just saw what happened in California, right? Like this is exactly what they did in California. They called for a study on reparations. Then when it came down to actually do something, they shut the bill down, right? So this is – that was just fluff to me. Like, of course, you can always – there's one thing that Washington is never in short supply of, and that is studying stuff. They will always say, oh, well, let's, let's study it. Let's study it. That doesn't mean they're going to do anything about it, but it gives the, the, the idea was to try to give some hope to people who are pro-reparations. Like, oh, well, support Volker Kamala. She's for reparations. That is not what she said. This is a, an attempt to have it both ways. Yeah, it's a yeah. non-answer answer, and she said that because what is she going to do, go on Charlemagne the God and say, no, I don't believe in reparations. That would be political suicide. Well, uh, w- would it? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's it's worse to get stand in the middle of the road and get hit by traffic going both ways, which is what Darby you're saying, <laughs> and what she's been doing. Um, and this is the problem. I mean, that that's it comes across as just as disingenuous as it is. There's no art to her artifice, and that's her that's her problem. She just can't sell this. Well, and you know, I saw two things. Uh, on social media in the last couple of days that were basically saying uh, the same general theme. Like I saw this interview with Frank Lance on CNN, and I also saw uh, a conversation uh, with a rapper by the name of Lord Jamar who was in Brand Nubian who was supporting Trump. And both, it was, it was similar. Frank Lance was saying he had did a focus group on, with black men, and basically the general theme was that the inauthenticity or like I said, the the appearance of inauthenticity, because I'm not in her hand, the appearance of inauthenticity turns black men off. It doesn't feel like she's being real. Mm -hmm. Just give it to us straight. And for, for a lot of black men who are looking at Trump or supporting Trump, they feel like at least I know what I'm getting with him. And that's the issue that she has. Yeah, yep, yeah, no, that's well said. Darvio Moro, CEO of the FCB Radio Network. He's the co host of the Outlaws Radio Show. You can follow him on X at D the Kingpin. Oh, that's a pretty cool X handle. Uh, Darvio Moro, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Listen to Dan and Amy on your smartphone. Download the AM560 mobile app today at 560theanswer.com slash mobile. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest-growing independently-owned business bank. It's a bank where relationships still matter.